plant in the go ahead in the North Highlands. The future lies in renewable energy. That's according to a North Highlands councillor. He's supporting proposals for a local wind farm. Opposition is growing within the local community. Protesters are heading to the site today, saying it'll spell disaster for the area. My grandfather came here first in the 1920s. For them, it would have been their leisure, really. They had independent means to run the place, but now we have to make a business of it, and it still revolves around all those traditional activities. What we're doing hasn't really changed very much. Well, almost forever, really. We very much have a sense of carrying on where others have been before us and building on what they've done and sustaining a way of life and a landscape which is important. I'm Isla and this is my daughter Catherine and my family have been here for four generations. My grandfather bought the place because his son was a falconer and we get people coming here from all over the world because they know it was one of the old classic falconry moors. Flow country is one of the most important habitats really in Northern Europe. It consists of very, very deep peat and stores probably for its area more carbon than the rainforest does. It's one of the big arguments against siting wind turbines, a large lump of concrete the size of two double-decker buses breaking up the peatland surface. It's a, a habitat which should be preserved for mankind. The thing with the windmills that I just don't um, understand is why would you build something that is essentially a very expensive source of energy. It just doesn't seem to add up to make them, to transport them, to have to build roads into the flow country to get to them, is disturbing not only the footprint of the windmill, but everything around it as well. There are two applications near here. There's one at Campster, which is about two miles across the hill there. And the other one would be on the top of these hills here, which is some of our best high hawking ground. But that would be devastating for falconry because um, the hawks are frightened of them. That's the main thing. And if they see these things, they'll just take a line and go. We depend upon falconry as part of our income. And a lot of falconers are against windmills. So even if the wind farm is a mile or two miles away, people will still not want to come up for that very fact. What is going to happen when wind power becomes unfashionable? Are we going to have fields of dead windmills strewn about the place? What are they going to do with the foundations? Are they going to dig it back up? Are they going to break it up? They've got no plan of what's going to happen. They don't seem to have a plan. There doesn't seem to be anything when they're no longer in use.
And an estate like this consists of farms and crofts, so much of the land use is shared. We're managing the ground so that we can take a small harvest of the game that's on it, and we work that very carefully so that you don't take too much. It's really a good example of a sustainable activity. And actually, if you're talking about getting two or three thousand pounds per turbine per year, you can make that same sort of money by carrying on this traditional activity. It keeps the landscape in the condition more or less that it's always been in, in a way that will suit future generations who can um, carry on where we've left off. They'll go ahead if nobody objects, but if you make a stand and make your voice counted, then, you know, there's a chance that maybe they won't. I think we're just going to make our little point that uh, there are places where you could put these things, but this isn't one of them. These are our, our heritage and something which could be destroyed so easily. go on in exactly the same way always but if you can't manage the land anymore what's going to happen to the next next generation of people